Altor's behind this. I know it. Altor and the Saints haven't been enemies in years. You really think he's responsible? You don't know him like I do. The boss put him through a window for a reason. The reason was the boss was kind of fucking crazy back then. That's a fair point. You know how much easier this would be if we just found a car? You know how much easier this would be if you just gave me a second? Alright, now how are we gonna find the Eltor building? Biggest building down here, giant altar sign on it. I don't think this is a problem. I'll buy that. Blade 2? You shall be devoured here. I think we may have got the attention of the demons. How do we want to handle this? We handle it by killing demons. Look at us. Kinsey Kensington and Johnny Gat driving together on a birthday adventure. Are you always this excited? Generally, I'm a misanthrope. I get it. This is hell. Not as bad as I thought. That reminds me of Steelport. <laughs> Let's see how this thing handles. shoot him in the face unless he gives us the boss back. What if Dean doesn't have the boss? I'll probably still see him. Welcome to hell. Shouldn't you have a receptionist? Such is the plight of eternal damnation. I have a feeling you didn't come here to catch up. Let's talk in my office. Not even death could stop the enterprising Vogel, who wasted no time in setting up an altar branch in the bowels of hell. 
Dane was eager to fill Johnny in on the ever-shifting politics of land rights in the underworld. But real estate mattered little to Johnny, who only cared where his friend was. Where'd you put the president? I've been trying to explain that I didn't take them. Bullshit. You expect me to believe you just happen to be the first thing we see in hell. Maybe it's just me, but your thank you sounds more like an accusation. That's probably because he plans to kill you. Okay. I get the trust issues. Can I show you something? The pieces all came together. The president had caused more chaos and destruction than any other in human history. It was only natural that Satan would want them to marry his daughter. They needed a plan. And Johnny had one. I'm gonna shoot the devil in the face. I think you might be skipping some details. No, I said in the face. I like the commitment, but you gotta find a way to get close enough to him in the first place. When's the wedding? I'll just show up and... And then you'll shoot him in the face. Sorry, but it's a little more complicated than that. These things are tied to the soul. You won't be able to enter without one. So how do we get one? You get his attention. I know some places that are of particular value to the father of the bride. You hit those, you'll get your shot. Wait, why would Satan give out an invitation for destroying his stuff? Oh, he won't, but it should piss him off enough to get him to attack Johnny personally. Either the devil kills Gat and Ultor gets the construction contracts to rebuild what was destroyed, or Johnny kills Satan and I'll have to pay less taxes. It's pretty win-win. That's why you're helping us? To make more money in hell? Hell's what you make of it, sweetie. Works for me. What you got? All right. Satan had entrusted the day-to-day -day running of hell to five archdukes, and Dane knew how to find them all. But beyond that, not everyone in hell was content to go along with Satan's status quo. There were others who shared Dane's ambition for power, and the Altor mogul knew that the key to unseating Satan lie in gaining their aid. But before Johnny set out to wage war against the Prince of Darkness, Dane had one final gift. An artifact that he had spent fortunes on. Lucifer's Cracked Halo. This holy relic granted Johnny the majestic wings of the Morning Star. However, he still needed help in learning how to use them. You got me out in the sticks, now what? Would it kill you to show a little excitement? You're about to experience angelic flight, for Christ's sake. Dane. Someone needs a nap. Just collect some soul clusters and power up the halo. You'll be flying around in no time. Great. Now you should have just enough clusters to power up your... Start slow, try to jump over to that next island. Also, the longer you charge your wings before jumping, the further you'll go.
Hey, you didn't fuck it up. Good job. Now get up that cliff. Don't worry. If something looks too high, just keep on jumping off the wall. Remember to charge your jumps if you want to get up the cliff faster. Now it's time to fly. You heard of crawling before walking? Well, in this case, you need to jump before you can fly. Launch yourself in the air with a jump, and then hold your wings out to glide to that next island. I put out some orbs to show you the path. You'll have to dive to reach the next island. Do that by pointing your head down. Don't worry, the rest of your body will follow. Put a shiny flap orb out in front of you. Collect the orb and your wings will flap to gain speed. All right, now try flapping those wings on your own. Do a flap on your way to the next island. Let's see what these things can do. The exact opposite of diving is climbing. Climbing will slow you down and eventually cause you to stall. And trust me, stalling sucks. You can flap while gliding to gain additional speed. So the faster you're going, the higher you can fly. Now try to reach the island up there. to take the training wheels off for the final lesson. Flying takes stamina. If you run out in midair, you are going to drop like a rock. A stupid, stupid, stamina-less rock. Last island is right under those lava falls. Notice how your stamina drains the longer you glide. Rest the wings. Running out of juice. Got a touchdown. God, this feels good. Let's get you back to the old tour building. I want to run through all the stuff you can do to hurt Satan. Sure thing. See you soon. Here's the deal. If you want some face time with Satan, you need to get his attention. Now, Satan hates being challenged, so anything you do to undermine his control is good. Fraud, mayhem, shooting demons in the face, anything. You can keep track of Satan's wrath with this handy meter. Get it high enough and you'll be having drinks with Big Red in no time. I've compiled a list of shit to do, so take a look and do whatever sounds fun. Oh, one more thing. We have some potential allies down here. Trust me, you want to impress them.
Yeah. I hope there's not something ridiculous like a hundred of these to find. Lots of ways to get Satan's attention, but we should never forget the class. Rampant fucking murder. Pride is a sin the Devil's Army has in spades, so if you want to pick a fight, you can bet your ass they're coming in droves. The Forge is prime real estate. This smoggy shithole is located over the richest mineral veins in the afterlife. You want to hurt Hell's infrastructure? Here's where you do it.
note to self. Find a way to control lightning. This should be useful.
us the wings. Abandoned ship! We've been boarded! <laughs> Things off my ship. Got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with our little imp problem. Summon these imps to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their captain. They ran amok in the bowers of the ship.
What pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zinyak's destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. Saint Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of hell to be overflowing, which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. Crunchy, the ability to summon my crew whenever they're needed. information on where the president is being kept. All right, matey. It's time for your lesson. Let's summon me favorite scurvy riddled hellion, the imp. Why don't you start off by summoning an imp to take out those enemies? Now take down the other demon. <laughs> Those little ankle biters are vicious. Now let's practice your aim. Take down the demons on the islands. are as rewarding as pressing someone into service, am I right? Now get going! There's a whole wide world waiting to be plundered. Mind if I do.
writer, William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached, but soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility, traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. Fighting incident resolved. The time had come for rising action. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? Resolved, Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in hell, 
Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comedies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of hell, the bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. So Shakespeare called forth the deus ex machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of force. Lights up. The mortal stands in the training grounds, eager to try out his new force stomp power on the group of demons in front of them. Some prayers won't be answered. Act one, scene two, in which our protagonist kills more demons with force stomp. In which our protagonist is greeted by foul imps. In which our protagonist learns that Force Stomp even works on flying enemies, enabling them to remove a dark inciter's shield before shooting them to death with bullets. There is also a mistaken identity and love unrequited. One, and the curtain closes on our noble hero. <sighs> Looking forward to stretching my wings.
right, buddy, let's take this opportunity to stretch those wings. I've set up a rudimentary flight path through the city. All Bad timing.